Hello there, um, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you pass in, you'll, you know the drill, thumbs up, thumbs down, share, like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, if, like, if it is the first time, you know, I talk about a lot of different subjects and I try to think about things that are useful. And that can range from relationships to legislation to injustice, lots of different things. So hang in there with me. And I just want to thank my returning subscribers for sticking with me as well. Today, I wanted to um, talk about how do we cope when everything around us, well, not everything, but most things around us are negative. How do we keep a positive mindset? Um, the reason why I decided to do this video is that I was listening to somebody yesterday and he said, I, I'm going to stay away from negative people. I don't want to have anything to do with negative people. I want to be positive. And I asked myself, he wasn't saying it to me, he was talking in an open forum. And I asked myself, who are the negative people? What are negative people? A negative people, the people who say things you don't want to hear? Are they people who try to dampen your spirit by talking about negative things about what's going on in the world or um, illnesses and death? Are they people who you just don't get along with? Um, and how do you keep positive? Do you keep positive by denying reality? Um, do you keep positive by um, just smiling and accepting everything as, oh, you know, I'm in a good mood, oh, hi, happy, blah, blah, blah. Is that keeping positive? Or are you denying and suppressing how you really feel? I mean, you can't be positive all the time. And I can understand trying to stay away from negative people, but our perception on what is negative might ne not necessarily be negative. It might be reality. Uh, remember, we was talking about, um, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, I think, about pastors, um, a police order being taken out on pastors who are prophesying about end times. They're saying that end times is calling, causing anxiety and nervousness, and they want to put a stop to it. Now, does that mean that those pastors are preaching negativity? Or is it just that they are announcing from the Bible about what possibly could happen if prophecy fulfills. So we have to kind of ask ourselves, is negativity reality or is it the way that it's put over? I mean, they say there's lots of ways you can say something and the way you say something determines how it's received. You can say the same thing and it can come out as negative. And you can say the same, another thing, meaning the same thing, and it's not taken badly. I was, I was trying to think of an example. It's just like saying, oh, you're fired. That can be taken as negative. Or the employer could say, um, thank you for your services. Um, we we don't we don't really need your services anymore because of A B C D and E. It amounts to the same thing, but you're left feeling differently about the same situation. It's like people that go on strike. Um, if they go on strike, it can be seen as negative for those people who are suffering, especially the ner the nurses and the ambulances, or it can be seen as a way look we need to look after ourselves in order for us to help you. If we don't have a certain amount of income, we can't pay our bills, even though it applies to a lot of people. And therefore, if we can't pay our bills, we can't concentrate, we can't do what we need to do. So all I'm saying is that 
I'm not quite sure. I think we have to think about how we nav navigate ourselves in a world where we are constantly being um, faced with what appears to be negative information. It can come over from friends, it can come over from the media, it can come over from social media. Um, sometimes I get um, videos of my WhatsApp and, you know, somebody's being shot and it's really graphic. And I'm like, why the hell are you sending me that? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it, not necessarily because it's negative, but I find it disturbing. It stresses me. I have that image in my head for a, quite a long time. So I don't want to see it. It's reality. It's happened. It's happened to someone. But for me, I know I'm an empath. I know how it's going to affect me. So I try to stay away from it. So that the incident is negative in the sense that somebody's been murdered brutally. Um, the fact that it's been sent, that's not negative. But the impact of sending that can have a negative effect on the person receiving it, if you see what I mean. So it's about how do we protect ourselves from things that disturb our peace of mind, from things that make us feel uncomfortable, from things that make us feel fearful. And supposing those things are real, okay, say, for example, um, we're hearing about COVID coming back and we're hearing about um, possible vaccinations and we hear about forced vaccinations and we're hearing about vaccinations for the vulnerable and we are in a position where we can either say to ourselves look when we heard about covid infections before um we didn't realize it was going to result in the lockdown it did and we didn't realize it was going to impact our livelihood in the way that it did. Similarly, we've got an insight of what an increase of infections can do ultimately. Ultimately, it can lead to lockdowns. Now, do we say to ourselves, oh no, we can't have another lockdown. England can't accept another lockdown. We couldn't cope. You know, do we say that? And actually deny and suppress and say, no, in our logical minds, that cannot happen. Or do we say, well, it happened before. The consequences were dire. We're still recovering from the consequences. But there is a possibility. And if there is a possibility, what am I going to do if it does happen? So instead of saying, oh, no, it couldn't happen, it's not doesn't make sense for it to happen. We prepare ourselves and our minds just in case it does. And what does that look like for you as an individual? So it's about planning ahead, seeing the signs that are out there, listening to the messages and what you hear, investigating and, you know, doing your research and making sure that what the sources are credible. And then you do what you can to protect yourself and your family to mitigate against it. You might not be able to do something completely, but that's just an example. We hear about lots of things. I mean, especially in the black um, communities, we hear about depopulation and we hear about um, excessive immigration and we hear about all of these things that we feel affect us then we start thinking oh my goodness um if they're trying to depopulate and they're talking about immigration and you know we hear about all these racist things coming up as black people we start thinking are we going to be the targets are we going to be vaccinated and when are we going to be vaccinated with vaccines that are going to kill us you see, and so then they start thinking about the Kiskadee experiment that happened way, way back in America and how that resulted in lots of deaths. And so 
is about all of these things that are happening. Is it realistic to say that, okay, they're going to vaccinate people, but will those vaccines kill people? Or are they genuinely designed to prevent COVID and other infections? Um, I think the problem a lot of people have is that you've got so many doctors and professionals who are saying that there's not enough um, tests being done and they are not um, approving it. And there's a lot of things that put question marks in people's minds. If everybody was on the same page, it would be fine. But not everybody is on the same page. These are the kind of things that cause anxiety, instability fear. The thought of losing control of your life, of your livelihood, of your health, of your future. We all know we're going to die at some point. There's no point fearing death. But how are we going to die? Is it going to be prematurely? Is it going to be artificially done? Is it going to be done by euthanasia? Is it going to be done by murder? Are we going to be in a car accident? Are we going to fall down the stairs and break our neck or something? How are we going to die? And I think that is the fear. Not so much that we are, we're destined to die as human beings, but how is it going to be painful? Is it going to be, you know, is it going to be lengthened out? Is there going to be torture? And all those kind of things. All of those kind of things can create negative thoughts or negative thought processes. And when you have negative thought processes, it means that you you have the, the um, behaviours and actions that go with that. And so if you have a negative thought process, that makes you start worrying, then you start worrying, then you start um, repeating this negative cycle and the same thing on what of this, and then you start trying to think of all the different things, and then you start telling someone else, and then it goes on and on and on. So what you need to do is think about the situation that you're worried about. Can you do anything about it? If you can, do what you can. If you can't, prepare and plan as much as you can to mitigate against it. You can only do so much. There's no point trying to, you know, do a 365 holistical assessment of what to do if a happens, have a contingency plan of A, B, C, D, right through to Z. That's not possible. But you can do your best, given the information you have, the source you got it from, and how realistic it is. So, um, what else was I going to say? Um, I'm constantly hearing about people dying. Is that negative? I've already said that. I think when a person tells you, like you get people telling you about death, but I think it's when people give you graphic descriptions about it and harp on about it and go from one death to another. That's when it starts being negative because it starts a programming in your mind. And that's what you want to avoid, those kind of things. Not that somebody has died. We we can accept that something's died, somebody's died, especially if it's a close relative. And we can grieve over that, but we do not want to know the graphic details and we do not know, want to know a history of all the people you know who have died. Um, <clears throat> what else have we got? OK, um, thinking about um, the 15 minute cities, some people say, you know, it's a load of hogwash. How are they going to put it into place? Um, you know, uh, it's not going to be instituted lots of things like that but just supposing it is what have you done you've had information about it so what have you done or what are you doing or how are you thinking so that when or if it does happen you are prepared and that's what I'm talking about a lot of people hear information and they poo poo it and then maybe three or four years it might not be now but maybe three or four years down the line they're like oh if only I'd known I would have done A, B, C, D, and E. All I'm saying is that don't poo-poo things. Just think about it. Research it and think, what can I do to make my life easier? It might give you a chance to move. 
because this is only in um, urban areas, it, you might have three or four years to move somewhere else. You might be able to do anything, but it's about just being prepared in advance so that when it happens, you're not going to find yourself in a negative mindset or state of mind. You're not going to get depressed. And that's what we're trying to avoid. People get depressed because they cannot control their situations. It feels overwhelming. They're anxious. They, you know, lots of things have happened, it's, you know, one after the other. It's cumulative. Lots of reasons why people get depressed. So this is about while you're in a sane state of mind, you do what you can while you can. Um, some people, they're talking about, oh, it can't happen. We'll protest. We'll retaliate. How is that going to serve you if it becomes law? So your answer shouldn't be, your answer could be an option. It could be an option, but you still need to have, just in case my protest doesn't work, just in case my retaliation doesn't work, what are my options? What am I going to do? How am I going to give myself peace of mind and adapt to this new situation that I don't like and that I don't want? We are losing control of our lives daily. How are we adapting to that? How can we lose control of our lives and still be at peace with it, knowing that we have given permission? Most of the time, we've given permission for the government and five eyes and whoever it is to invade our lives. Putting aside human rights, because there are always um, exceptions to the rule. And whether it's a public disorder, public health, whatever it is that can take away your human rights, what you would normally have. And public health is a big one. The infections that, that can stop you from having your rights, 100% of your human rights. They can be taken away from you. So um, all I'm saying is, is that in that eventuality, say public health or whatever, you're prepared. You've thought ahead. You've thought, OK, this could happen. There's a possibility, a vague possibility. But if it does, I've thought about it. I've considered these options and this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. Um, what else have we got to do? What is the cause of fear? Usually it's the fear of discomfort, instability, pain, loss or dying. Um, these thought processes are what create negative thinking instead of prompting you to prepare for eventualities. Um, negative thinking can lead to depression, can't be bothered, isolation, drugs and alcohol. Um, keep your ear to the ground. Listen, prepare, do not dismiss. Anything is possible. It might be a conspiracy theory. It may not. Investigate. It's your responsibility. People like me, we can just mouth off. We can say whatever we want. It doesn't have to make any sense. It doesn't even have to be true. You have to do your homework. You need to protect yourself and your family. And the only way you can do that is not rely on people, what people say, and all these different sources. But you can have what people say and then think, hmm, that sounds interesting. That sounds like a possibility. Let me look more into this. You take that responsibility so you don't end up doing something. Say, oh, that person said it. Oh, that one's supposed to be a doctor. You have all these people on YouTube, you know, with all these titles. How do you know they are, are who they say they are? We don't believe people just because they've given themselves a title. What you do is you take what they've said, you put it in Google or whatever source you want, to find out more about it, and you do your research. That's all you've got to do. So it's based on what your what you have found out. Okay, that person has given you an idea or a thought, something to think about, and it's up to you to kind of investigate further. So um, logical thinking isn't always the best course of action. Like I said, just because it doesn't sound logical doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, what else? 
just because we don't like something, we don't want to hear or don't want to see something, that doesn't mean it's negative when it crosses your path. It just means that you don't like it and it might affect you. It might stress you out, but it doesn't mean it's negative. It's how you receive it that's negative and how they give it to you. But you can always stop it in its tracks. If it doesn't, if it starts to feel uncomfortable, you you just stop it in its tracks. If it's something that somebody's saying, look, I prefer not to hear that. Thank you. If it's something they sent you, sometimes you've opened it and you've already seen it and it's too late. You can't stop it. But you can stop it to a point where it wouldn't impact you as much as if you saw it to the end. So um, what else have I got? How do you keep positive in a negative world? By examining the source of information. Asking yourself, is there anything you can do to change it, reduce the impact or improve the outcome? Some people say if you can't change it, accept it. Yes, you can accept it, but accept it and and give yourself options. You know, plan, do things that can, you know, once you've accepted it, you know, you're doing things to make sure that it has a lesser impact on you. Um, if there is nothing you can do about it, how will you address it? How will you adapt to it? Will you deny, suppress, refuse to believe, dismiss or make light of it? Or will you prepare? Prepare and plan. Another thing to keep positive in a negative world is filter out exaggeration, sensationalism, gossip, headlines, manipulative strategies. There's so much of it, you know, anything that they say anything that looks too good to be true usually is, but it's not even about that anymore. It's about people. Um, what are they doing? They they know how to pe appeal to your senses. It's almost like people have studied what will entrap people and they exploit it. So just be wary about what people are doing to pull you in. I mean... I consider myself an intelligent person, and yet I've been pulled in quite a lot recently. My instincts have told me halfway through, oh, hang on a minute, some, something doesn't seem right. And I've managed to stop myself. But there's a lot of things that are going on that sound so real and um, authentic, incredible, that you can get drawn in. So, and Sometimes it's depending on the source. Sometimes you say, okay, it's a guardian. Sometimes it's the telegraph. Sometimes it's the Forbes. Sometimes you rely on certain sources. But always look at a few sources to see whether or not they back each other up. Um, focus on reality and what seems, focus on your reality and what seems feasible and sensible to you. Work out ways to cope in advance and try to plan as much as possible just in case. Thoughts, emotions, behaviours are all linked. If you've have you ever had a bad thought, I'm sure you have. And you've acted in such a way, you know, you've got angry, you've got resentful, you've got frustrated. And then when you've approached that person, it's a totally different perception they've given you. And you calm down in seconds. You know, they, they call that kind of thing object referral. They have this, um, they use this example, when I say they, counsellors, use this example where you're walking, you're facing somebody who you know, a very good friend of yours, and they walk straight past you. And you can think, oh my God, what have I done? Um, what did they, you know, why aren't they speaking to me? Has somebody said something to them? And you can create and concoct this big story and it can make you angry, upset. And all sorts of emotions can take place. And then you hear from a third party that that person's mother died on that day or they, they've been told that they've got cancer and it has nothing to do with you. The emotions you felt as a result of that person passing you, 100% real and authentic. But when you hear the reason behind it, why that person ignored you, all of a sudden all those emotions disappear. And that is what it's like when you have negative emotions and especially when they're based on false information and it can perpetuate in your mind. So just be careful about what you take in, what you absorb and whether or not it's verified and that kind of stuff. Um, 
mood and behavior transitions from chaotic to calm. Once you found out the information, your thought processes were incorrect. It moves from the chaotic to the calm. Um, a lot of people, they pray. Prayer, prayer is a form of self-talk. You can, it can be very, very beneficial if you know how to word what you're saying. Always be careful how you self-talk. Prayer is a form of self-talk. Um, make sure it's what you want to happen. And it's clear, one directional. Not, oh, what if, or oh, supposing, or can I, or no. It has to be what you want to happen when you're self-talking, when you're praying. And faith, everything will be okay. Not in and of itself. Because people, some people think that they're going to sit back, especially some Christians. They think, oh, I'm going to sit back. God is going to take care of everything. No, God helps those who help themselves. So don't think you can sit back and, oh, when all these things are happening and, oh, there's going to be blood on my door and it's all going to pass over. No, it's not. You have to do what you need to do to protect yourself. Like I said, if you've got a family, to protect your family. Prepare in advance. And that's all I've got to say. Sorry it was so long. Bye-bye.